Just excuse me, eh? Operation Center. I am here in front of so many people. I don't know whether my talk will be interesting or not. So keep up because I will keep you till the end. Over. Okay, over and out. We will keep this device here because this is the most interesting part from my talk. My name is Dr. Jamal, and maybe some of you recognize me from Green Apple. So I will tell you my story. Uh, Hamid and Awad spoke about different themes of changing life. But life in my dictionary is a journey. And you will learn a lot because I learned myself a lot. So I think you came across these statements. Each one of us can look at one of them. Myself, I looked at the last one. Life is a chance. Make sure you take it, but most importantly, Life is what you make it. And you will discover my bad ways in my life during the last 25 years. I choose to start from this building because this is the amazing project that <laughs> happened in Al Ain City. This is Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. So in 1993, I finished my secondary school. I scored 92. So at that time, I decided where to go. I remember, thanks one of my teachers here in the UA University who told me why you are joining Faculty of Medicine. It's better for you if you remember. He told me that you better go to the engineering <coughs> because I was good in mathematics. So Hamid said, follow your heart. So I followed my heart at that time. And that decision was not regretted because at that time it was the right choice. So how I reached to the conclusion that I preferred or my aim is to enter the faculty of medicine and to keep my hobbies like the IT gadget and engineering, programming, working with the computer and so on. I came with a simple conclusion. I can learn everything else except medicine. I need to go to school to learn medicine and to become a physician. But the gadget, the IT gadget and all other stuff programming, I can learn them by myself. And this is what happened actually. So I entered Faculty of Medicine. I stayed there for eight years, finished my MBBS. I graduated in 2002. At the same time, I was working with my colleague in the university to make our learning process easier. The students still remember me because I was carrying Palm device at that time. I put all my references in that device. And some of them here remember carrying huge books in their white coat. I was the only one who was not carrying books. And I was the only one who can answer very quickly because I have a device in my hand. So whenever the professor asks a question, I pop up, this is answer. Because I reference it here in my device. And they are still keeping how Dr. Jamal is doing this. And they were asking me to uh, teach them how to install programs and so on. And I was really proud when I presented once to all the GCC students about my experience in using Palm device in easy and making it easy to learn the medicine also. Because medicine is about reading so many references and put the theoretical part in your head and then you apply it in your practical life. So when I finished my graduation, it was like a normal UAE national who entered the school and finished. And after that, so what will happen? My, my dream actually at that time was to go for specialization in hematology and oncology, which is the disease, studying the disease of blood and cancer. So always I, I felt that I'm, I'm the one who will find the treatment for cancer. But did I reach to that conclusion or not? <laughs> Let's see. 2003, when I was sitting with my mother, finished my graduation, and it was Saturday night. Sunday will be my first working day in the hospital. I told her, I think at that time there was that things happening in Al-Iraq. I told her, I think I'm going to Al-Iraq from nowhere. She said, OK, go. If you want to go, go. It was like a discussion between a son and his mother. That's all. Sunday morning, someone called me telling me, Dr. Jamal, you are 
chosen to go to Al Iraq. So now, can I call my mother back and tell her the truth? So I called her back. Believe it or not, I'm going to Al Iraq. One week only, I will be on the ship to Al Iraq. What? And she started crying. Because that moment was critical because uh, the situation was difficult. So I went to Al Iraq. And those two months in Al Iraq changed my life. It came from nowhere, but it changed my life. You, I, I just found these two photos from Google. In 2003, I was the medical doctor, actually, who was going with the Red Crescent for this humanitarian mission. I put the map because we entered Um Qasr down there, and I have an ambulance with me and a nurse, and we drove all the way till the border of Turkey. We went everywhere in two months. We saw everybody because we were representing our government. And if someone one day tell you how much our government is spending in a humanitarian mission, maybe you will not believe it. Myself, I was not believing the numbers and the way they are doing it. But when I was in Iraq, I discovered that myself. I discovered how many sheikh were calling us. <laughs> just asking us for opportunity to give money, to give something. One day, I was in the middle of Iraq, in a Ramadi, and there was a disease called black fever disease. All the children were dying. After having episodes of diarrhea, they died. And the treatment was one tablet, which was not found in Iraq because of uh, the, it was يعني, uh, withdrawn from Iraq from other reason. Wallahi, in 24 hours, those tablets were in Al-Kuwait border. I received a call, Dr. Jamal, go there and get your medication and treat those people. The second one is that boy who was lying in bed. I entered one day the children's hospital. I saw 10 children lying in bed. All of them the same image that you see, injury to their legs. If you know uh, about the war, there is a type of bomb called cluster bomb. Those 10 boys actually were playing football and they were injured by cluster bombs which attack their legs so they cannot walk anymore. Actually, they were 11. They lost one who died. So I asked that boy exactly, Inshallah, you will play football again. He said, no, we will not play again. So why? What do you think the answer would be? Because he lost his leg. He will not be able. But he didn't say that. He said, we lost our captain, number 11. That day, I learned what the word team means. So take care of your team. Actually, we brought them back here to our country. They got artificial link, legs in uh, Germany. And I wish if I can go back to see them, whether they are playing or not. That lady. <laughs> so you see, you put. Life puts you in different situations. You just need to learn it. And those two months in Iraq actually were reflected in my work later on because this is the meaning of teamwork, team spirit. We read it in the book, but we can't feel it. This is where you can feel it. And I encourage people to join sometime in your life a humanitarian mission because you will learn a lot. You will not believe. Uh, Mr. Awad Darmaki said, okay, we are reading books, but books is only tools to learn. That lady was actually burned by a bomb, and we just found her on the street. So we just put her in the ambulance. We started cleaning the wound and took her to the hospital. So many stories to tell you about my two months in Al-Iraq, but I chose these because I thought these are really important messages for TEDx. Then I came back from Iraq. I decided to chase my dream to be a consultant in hematology oncology. I went to Germany because this was opportunity there. 
I learned the German language in six months. I remember my day, uh, my first week in the hospitals. And one day the professor asked me to, to present a case to, the, to everybody in the hospital. And he asked me, can you present it? And it's fine if you present it in English. You don't need to present it in German language. I had that ego or super ego. No, I will present it in German language, in your language. <laughs> I, w I want to prove something, you know, and I did it. I know how many, uh, and it did, it, at that time, I evaluated the situation. Those who will attend, whether they will be interested in listening to the case or listening to Dr. Jamal mistakes in German language. <laughs> so at the end, everybody was uh, greeting me. You are really strong. If we were in your position, we would not be able to do it. For me, it was something simple. I just decided to give it in German language, nothing else, no science behind it. I wanted to prove myself I can do more, that's all. Three, three years after spending uh, or studying uh, medicine in Germany, I, yani I suffered from an illness. I could not complete my study. And so this is where you need to think again. My professor there, he just shocked me with this statement. You have to take a break and think whether you want to do this or not. You are sick and you want to be a physician. You just need to decide. You cannot be both. Because, you know, medicine needs on calls. If you cannot do on calls, your colleague will complain about you. He is not, no one will consider anything about you. You either, you are a physician or not. There is no middle responsibility. So I came back, I stayed 10 months away from Germany, just thinking my future. <coughs> I ask everyone. And this is why I brought this device here. This is from my work actually here currently in, in health authority. Sometime we need a device to help us. In life, we need someone to guide us. Today, I'm really thankful for my professor. Yes, he stopped my dream at that time, but he directed me to think again and to find myself in a different pathway. And this is what I have been struggling in the last four or five years. And I'm really, yani, I feel proud because I got the support. I put the plan, as uh, our Dharmaki said, and I reached my goals. Yes, my dream, we are not achieved the main dream, but it can be done in a different way. I put these dates. I cannot remember my birthday, actually, because I don't care about it. Maybe Ahmed Shemiri is a big fan of the age, and he count all the years, but for me, no, no way, because I hate that day. It's not because of the meaning, but because I discovered myself or a new Jamal whenever, w after I came back from Al-Iraq, when His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed approved <laughs> my transfer to his authority Abu Dhabi which was on 11, uh, 4 November 2007. This guy is an amazing person in our life, and we are thankful that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed is a leader here in this country. You will not believe. I spent only 15 minutes with him. <laughs> because you know, the bureaucracy will prevent you. Why, why a physician wants to leave the hospital and work in an administration? People will think, okay, continue working as a general practitioner. But I, I, I went to him and I spoke to him like a son talking to his father. I just told him, I, I think I can do more. I just need an opportunity. Give me that opportunity, I will do it. So he approved my transfer to health authority. And from that day, Ahmed said, you just need to work hard. So I remember my father complaining to me from November 2007, till today, till he retired from his work. You used to be with us, but not anymore. You are working from seven to seven. My father was living with me in Abu Dhabi, and he barely see me every day, because this is a new chance in 2007. So I, I worked hard in, in the health authority. I worked in clinical review and investigation, where I meet all the patients who suffered from medical errors, and then I was appointed to work in the clinical audit, department where I was a section head of that group of team who audit all healthcare facility in Abu Dhabi. This is a responsibility. 
So uh, this was actually in June 2008. And then uh, December, there was a, a new opportunity where His Highness Sheikh Mohammed decided that he wanted to send 23 UAE national to John Hopkins to complete their master degree. And I applied, and I was accepted. And in June 2011, I completed my master in public health and leadership. So this is a new, a new pathway, different pathway from my dream. May 2000, or let's start February 2010, there was a team in health authority uh, looking after the media and all the projects that we have with the media. So they thought that, okay, I am a media guy from nowhere. Okay, Dr. Jamal, you will be appointed to be the head of corporate communication and customer service. Oh, why not? Okay, let's see. So I went there and then start working with the media. And then there was a project that we need to have a show. And here come Green Apple. This is something different. So who am I? I'm a media guy or a customer care or I'm doing my master in public health. Where am I exactly? So can I refuse this chance? So NBC came actually. We decided to work with them to combine education with entertainment. It is a format of Dr. Oz, if you know, in the US. Similar thing, but we tailor it to our needs here in the, in the region. So we, uh, we started in May 2010. We shooted 42 episodes. It was exhausted. And I can tell you, in one year, I did not get my annual leave till last December. So in, in 2010 till December 2011, I was studying my master with John Hopkins. I was working as a director of customer care. I have 110 employees in my division. Plus, I have a show which obligated me to travel each month for one week to Lebanon to do the shooting from 9 in the morning till 12 in the evening. But at the end, what I get from this show is the love. I just needed love. So anyone who see me in the street, he will give me a, a nice statement. Maybe they don't like my appearance, they don't like what I have said, but they loved the show itself. It changed their life, and this is what I'm aiming, is changing people's behavior toward health. We are not doing sport, we are not eating a healthy food, we prefer always McDonald's and, 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 and. But this is not the right thing to do. This, the show stopped, actually, and now I'm thinking of something else. Uh, and people still uh, ask me why I stopped, because we are going in the right direction. But when you will see the new thing I'm preparing, maybe you will say, okay, he is doing the right thing. And now we are coming to the interesting part. Do you remember this photo? Gantut. Our life is similar to Gantut accident. I'm just doing a reflection here. Sometime we face this trouble in our life. 200 cars collapse together in one day in the morning. At that time, are we prepared? If I tell you the story about Gantut and what happened, I received the accident happened at 7 o'clock in the morning. I received a call at 9 o'clock in the morning. I was in the health authority. Dr. Jamal, we need your help. We have a huge accident, and we want your experience with us as a physician to tackle this. I went to the operation center, which was only one small room in Sheikh Khalifa city. One disk, one telephone, one whiteboard. That's it. No such devices. Put your life or think of your life that sometime you need these devices to help you overcome these incidents in your life. Today I can assure you, if the fog did something similar, at least we can save life. We have good communication, good infrastructure to transfer patients from this area to the hospital. And sometime you need someone in your life to take you from one pathway where you don't feel yourself to another pathway and to give you a guidance. I was lucky to have my professor, to have his Highness Sheikh Mohammed, to have the support from uh, health authority and from my colleague, from my family. So let's see whether if something happened right now, can I transfer patient 
or not. So let's see, we'll call the call center. We have an operation, more advanced right now, an operation center that communicate with all the hospital. So each hospital, we can alert them or uh, give them an instruction in one minute with these devices. Operation center, I need to tell me right now how many beds available in Abu Dhabi. Thank you, over and out. So ask yourself, do you have such a device in your life or not? And the last, they said it before me, don't stop. You stop when you die. Keep trying. Keep changing till you find yourself. I know some, my friend, they are working on uh, some places they don't like. Why you are working there? Ask yourself, always have a dream. And the dream is specific for one time. Maybe it will change later on. Maybe you'll dream in the secondary school to join faculty of medicine. But after you graduate, you, okay, I don't think this is my dream. I need to change it. Maybe I'll work with Dr. Jamal in Green Apple, maybe. Love yourself. And this is the magic statement, I think, in my opinion, from my life. You need to be proud of yourself. You are an Emirati. So feel proud of yourself, please. <laughs> Keep it up. With love, you need to believe in yourself. I hope this statement can change your life because it changed my life. Thank you very much.